experience on the court. Haters have come out bombing away at three, but haven't hit any of them yet. They did collect a couple of offensive rebounds. Ojo won't be shooting from there. He's a big body at seven feet. Long three ball. That's no good. And Hill gets another rebound for the Gators. Off the Horford screen. Another three ball. Another miss. That's 0 for 4. And Rattan Mays the other way, but he doesn't have the numbers. Florida's a decent three-point shooting team at 35%. But at the moment, nobody can find a bucket. Murphy. The ex-Duke player, good bounce pass, fumbled, and traveled. Nothing wrong with Murphy's entry pass, but Horford just had a case of uh, butterfingers, and Florida State goes quickly to the bench, and Keel Turpin will come into the game for Ojo. Another seven-footer, one of three, available for Leonard Hamilton. And that's a mistake because he turned it over, stepped on the out-of-bounds line, Take a look at Kyle Turpin, number 11, out of Normal, Illinois. He's already got his degree. And another big, long-armed option. You know, a lot of unforced errors already on both ends. And, you know, Florida, you, you reference it, Dave, they've gotten some clean looks at the basket. But this is what they need to do there. Even with that big front line, look to attack and try to get aggressive going to the rim. And there's a foul. Bertan May is off the block by Kyle Turpin. He hits the floor, and that foul will be on Michael Frazier the second. Well, Xavier Rattan Mays, you know, he's somebody that at, at the point guard position needs to be aggressive. He's a rugged player. He can attack. And this is what Florida State needs to look to do. Use that size on their front line. They can test shots at the rim. That's going to give them opportunities to get out and run. And then you don't have to face that Florida full court pressure. Xavier Rattan Mays out of Ontario. Bounce it a couple is dead played very effectively. Theron Mays for Florida State. Played a little bit in the NBA or the CBA overseas. Father's around here somewhere tonight. That's Frazier into the paint. Good bounce pass, but Orford nice gets it up foul. to Murphy, and he's hammered. That foul will be on Kofer. <laughs> So when Florida is running their stuff well, uh, it's it's like a machine in the sense that they're reading and they're reacting off of one another. And so that cut was a very good cut, but what made him come open was the timing of it. Alex Murphy, the timing of the cut, the fact that he waited for John Horford to see him. And, and that's what is going to still come along for Florida. You know, we talked about them finally having their complete lineup. A lot of what Billy Donovan does is reading and reacting. And, and so you have to play with each other, and you have to play with the other guys in order to know what to do. And so the more that these these players, Alex Murphy, Eli Carter, are integrated back into the lineup, the better they'll be. Brandon with a very impressive move. He wanted that ball from the time he got across the half-court line and goes from the left side of the rim for the layup. Chris Walker, number 23, is checked in for the Gators as Horford is out of the game. And the Seminoles bring in number five also, Jarquez Smith, a sophomore. It's going to be an offensive foul against Florida and on Finney Smith. Team second and his first. So at the early onset, it's been a poor offensive showing, despite some great looks for the Gators. Yeah, but anytime they can get in this dead ball opportunities, they can do this. They can set up their full court pressure. They can look to get opportunities. Watch Finney Smith. He'll look to run and jump if he can and see if he can get a tip. I like what Florida State's doing. They're attacking. Can't pick it up. Yeah, I can't pick it up, and the baseline was the extra defender. Nice bounce pass, though. Shot is set out of bounds by Walker. 21 to shoot for the Knowles. Quick conversation there, Roger Ayers and Chris Walker. Maybe Ayers telling Walker, hey, don't say what you said again, because it'll cost you. It's handmade. Seminoles struggle from the perimeter. 24% three-point shooting team. They won't be looking to shoot outside very much, but the shot clock works against them here. Down to five. Lost. 
Down to four. They still have to do something, and they give it up. Instead, on the steal, Eli Carter over to Frazier, and he'll go. And let's see. We may have a goaltend in addition to the end one opportunity. Count the basket. It is goaltending, and Florida will go to the line. Kyle Turpin will be hit with that foul. Yep. Changing ends. I mean, that's been the best offense for either team here in the early going is that they've been able to get the basketball off of the rim and attack in transition. Half court wise, neither team has executed to a high degree. And a lot of substitutions in this game as Frazier checks out. Devin Robinson, the junior from Chesterfield, Virginia, checks in. Frazier's still playing with some stitches in his head from a collision on the 20th of the game in Sunrise, Florida against Wake Forest. Ball lost there. Pretty behind the back dribble by Hill to get away from the pressure. And then had it knocked away, but Carter is right there. And Florida wisely resets. And we have an official's timeout. And do we have blood here, perhaps? No, we have an injured Florida player. And it's Eli Carter, the former Rutgers Scarlet Knight. Roger Ayers very quickly stopped play. The coaches now will get their players together. And I didn't see if we can find what happened to Carter away from the ball here. All right, keep an eye on number one here for the Gators. He has the ball. All good so far. And then there. Huh. Well, you take a look at Eli Carter and, you know, his tenure at Florida has been marred by injury. Uh, he had the red shirt a year ago, transferred from Rutgers. He was eligible to play immediately and ended up red shirting last season because of a hurt leg. And then this year comes back and has been dealing with a midfoot sprain and then was sick the week before Christmas and not able to play. So, you know, he really hasn't been able to get into a groove because he hasn't been able to be healthy for any long stretch of time. Florida inbounded the ball with 24 on the shot clock. Not an official timeout. It was called by an official, but neither team charged with it. Hill into the paint. Alley oop, misfired. Turnover. Seminoles come the other way with it. Florida State's had the ball eight times. They've turned it over three times. There's a block, and Walker got a ball, but he also got apparently just enough of the Seminole shooter. We'll step away with Florida State and a low scoring game against the Florida Gators. Four to three. We take a look. Those are very solid picks. Thank How about you. that? That foul, by the way, was on Chris Chioza, the freshman from Memphis, not on Walker. And you can look at Monte Brandon. Here's a very important player in the development for Florida State this year. If he can get going, the junior from Greensboro, Seminoles could be very good. He is their leading scorer. One of the top thieves in the ACC, over one steal per game. To the cutter, another good-looking pass, and Walker with a great opportunity, and that's been the story early for the Gators. Tough layup reversed by Devin Booker. He had 22 against South Florida about nine days ago. Another seven-footer set to check in. For Leonard Hamilton Seminoles and the Gators are going to sub three at the next whistle. Well, you watch Florida and it's their motion offense. I mean, it's a ton of movement and it's their post player setting screens around the perimeter. And Florida State's done a pretty good job here in the early going of being able to keep those guys in front. Murphy missing a three. And we're going to get a rebounding foul against Florida and Robinson. Well, Devin Booker, it's just a really good attack. And... Getting to the to the baseline side, using that rim as some protection as Chris Walker comes over with that early help. And, you know, Florida State has been the aggressor here in the early going. And it's just a four-point lead. But in terms of attacking the basket, attacking in transition, they've done it a little bit better than Florida. Here is that famed Florida press now backed off just a little bit. 
Chris Chioza providing the pressure against Bertan Mays, who breaks it. Good looking pass. Checking in the game, Boris Bojanovsky, number 15, the seven foot three player from Slovak. And the Seminoles lose control of it out of bounds. Florida gets it. Is it just a matter of the Florida's getting good looks and you're just not falling, or is there something the Florida State is doing? They're, they're keeping them out of the paint for the most part. I mean, Casey Hill's been able to get in there a couple times. He's hard to stay in front of, but they, I think Florida State will, will give up the three-point shot to certain guys. Maybe not Michael Frazier, but to, to Murphy and Dory and Finney Smith, I think they're willing to have that be the lesser of the two evils. And you let Florida, Florida's guards attack the paint, and that's going to be a higher percentage shot. So I think Florida State's done a pretty good job defensively to this point. Gators have taken five threes and missed them all. Florida State's missed one. Off the Horford screen, he's tried at the three. There's Frazier. Can't even see him. That's a nice looking pass, and that's missed by Robinson. Reset shot clock, another offensive rebound. Robinson in a little bit of trouble looking for help. That's a very low percentage pass, got away with it. Off the Horford screen. Horford flashed open, and that pass was a little clumsy. Hit ahead here for the Seminoles. is too far ahead, and neither team at the moment putting much into their highlight DVDs. It's just really good help defense there, and then Robinson. That's a, a good-looking player. I mean, you walk into the gym, and, and you look at Devin Robinson, and, and wow. I mean, at six foot eight as a three-player, he's, he's got a ton of potential. Billy Donovan told us earlier, the NBA folks who come by to visit love his potential. You see a good-looking pass, and Horford gets the easy layup. Just a matter of him developing. He's a slender 6'8". He listed him at 178 pounds, but he's got hops. In case you didn't see that. You know, he's going to have to get a lot stronger, and, and certainly that will come as he grows and as he matures. To the floor go the Gators and the Seminoles, and back the other way comes Chioza, the freshman guard. And Florida throws it away, so each team with five turnovers. Now, conversely, Florida State struggling a little bit offensively despite the lead. What's missing from their attack? Well, you know, Florida State is, is a team that has struggled offensively really all season long. So... You know, they're, they're so dependent on their perimeter players to get quality looks at the basket. You know, whether it is Monte Brandon, whether it is Xavier Rattan Mays. So it's been a struggle for them against good defensive teams in the half court to get quality looks at the basket. They're not a great three-point shooting team, and so you can really pack it in and keep them in front, and they'll struggle. Terrible pass there by Rattan Mays, and a bad pass there. Bojanovski intercepts. Six turnovers for each team. Tan Mays being pursued by Hill. That's Brandon. He stops. For more time, Phil Kofer back in the game. And also number four, Deshaun Watkins has checked in. Good pass to Kofer. Gators there on defense. Kofer, tough shot. Dorian Finney-Smith playing well at the point, at the pivot, rather. And Hill has the three ball. And there is one of the country's better three-point shooters finally hitting Michael Frazier the second. That was just great patience by Casey Hill there. He understood who he had on each wing, and that's what great point guards do. And that's looks like that was almost a travel there. Wojnowski gets the free slam as Robinson was just a hair late coming over. So though, while not pretty, it is close. Stolen and knocked out of bounds off of Robinson. Put it along with the Seminoles, and we'll take a break. Florida State in front, 9 8 over Florida. On the offensive end of the floor, and they've maintained that defensive prowess. And I'd love the statement they made against Harvard on the defensive end of the floor. It was the day after that Kentucky put that hammer down on UCLA, and everyone's saying how that's Kentucky has the best defense in the country, which they do. But then Virginia goes and does that to Harvard, and there's some defense being played. And there's some being played in this game. We've already had 13 turnovers, and you're seeing the Florida style as finally Brandon gets open, drives on Murphy, tough floater. Wojnowski had it and lost it. Into the game now. Jacob Kurtz, number 30. There's Murphy giving up the three-pointer, and that's goal tending. I think everybody can see that. And it'll be the Gators in front by one. 
That's a nice attack by Alex Murphy. And he had an open three-point shot, but I like the fact that he's looking to attack. I think it's something Florida needs to do more of with the spacing that they have on the offensive end. But the key to that play was Jacob Kurtz in the outlet pass he gave to Casey Hill. I mean, that really helped jumpstart that break and give them an opportunity to attack. This is what Florida State worked on in their shoot-around this afternoon, and they do break it. Bojanowski's not going to be handling it much longer, but Berwick will fire a three-ball. No good. Rebound knocked loose. Kurtz runs away with it for Florida. Here comes the Gators. Hill passes up the foul line jumper. Frazier won't pass up the three. He was halfway down the single cylinder before it popped out. Seems like both coaches with their substitution patterns are trying to find a group of players that is going to establish some rhythm on the offensive end of the floor. Way too many turnovers, way too many unforced errors. So we'll see which team can find that. Bojanowski has given them some good minutes. I like how aggressive he's been at the back end of their press. Bojanowski with four points. He's made both of his shots. 7-3, but slender for 7-3 at 2.30. And Alan Owens will pick up. Ante Brandon. Murphy's got some hops. And that's going to be a blocking foul. Score the bucket. Well, story similar to what we've seen in the first half of this first half is turnovers and turnovers they lead to open buckets but then I love the fact that Florida runs it right back up Florida State and gives Alex Murphy an opportunity to drive to the bucket Michael Ojo will come in Bojanowski checks out of some very effective minutes picked up the foul there but still two for two take a look at Murphy the former Duke Blue Devil brother played at Florida Murphy had a strong debut on the 20th against Wake Forest in the Orange Bowl Classic, and he worked his way quickly in the starting lineup. Under 10 minutes in this opening half, Florida State trying to snap a five-game losing streak in this series. That won't help. And that's also going to be a goaltend. That is the third goaltend against the Seminoles tonight. Florida State guards have done this a couple times, and, and Berwick, Ber, Berwick is the one who does it there. You cannot pick the basketball up once you cross half court if you're a perimeter player. Cannot do it. Against their run and jump, they're going to trap you, and now your options are very limited. So Florida State guards, they got to keep their dribble alive once they cross half court. One of the big fellow for underneath, Ojo rather, still knocked around, and it belonged to Florida. So Florida State tried to get cute with an alley-oop. Ojo wasn't able to do anything with it. And the parade of substitutions just continues. Now the Seminoles take out Jarquez Smith and bring back Xavier Rattan Mays. He's guarding the ball on Casey. Now Ojo flashing for the moment. And Hill missed the layup. Rebound fought for. And after Walker was unable to do anything with it, it belongs to Rattan Mays. And away from the ball, we've got contact, and that's going to go against Florida State. An offensive foul on Phil Kofer, who was battling for position. It was Jacob Kurtz right in front of one of our officials. That's going to go against FSU. That's another turnover. And more substitutions. Coming back into the game, Jarquez Smith. And Kofer will check out. Murphy with a head-to-head -head pass, and there's an easy bucket for Dorian Finney-Smith. Good look by Murphy there. You know, there's a couple times here in this first half that Florida has had that post rolling open. Horford fumbled a couple, but that's going to be open. If they get that hard hedge on that pick and roll or Dorian Finney-Smith is able to slip, they're going to have openings with their post rolling to the basket. Played Florida State the last couple of times, done a better job getting away from the Florida pressure, and it is a constant for Billy Donovan. It's a trademark. Corner three ball, not Florida State's thing. Frazier gets the rebound in traffic for the Gators. Frazier 
Good looking little drive and the floater drops. And Florida with their largest lead up to six. Yeah, so what do we see from Florida's offense? The best parts about their offense, the best things have happened. One reasons why downtown Tallahassee is so quiet right now. Uh, you've got an excellent crowd here at the Tucker Civic Center. Well, not only not having the students, but that probably half of Tallahassee is out in Pasadena <laughs> getting point. ready for the Seminoles football game. Yep, state government is quiet for the moment, so there's uh, not a lot going on, and yet a lot of folks are here. Tribute to fans from both schools. Almost another steal. Ojo, the conduit here. Didn't give it to Booker, even though he was open. Ojo setting a screen, inching out carefully. Wide open there. And a rebound goes back to the Seminole. Remember, they're a 24% three-point shooting team coming into the game, and they haven't made one tonight. 0 for 4 now. Chioza back into the game for the Gators, running the point. Off Walker's screen. Murphy. Frazier will draw attention when he looks like he wants to shoot a three-pointer. Seven to shoot it. Frazier on the drive. Tough shot. Rebound. Seminoles taken out by Jarquez Smith. And that's going to be a blocking foul against Florida. And it'll be on Murphy. Appearances. And I think underappreciated in Florida. Not around the country, but this is such a football state that I think really do believe, and I give my Florida Gator friends a hard time about this, that he is underappreciated by some of their fans. Aggressive play there by Hill. Fit for the dunk, and that's a foul. Wow, that would have been spectacular if Robinson had been able to throw that down. I mean, this is just lack of hustle and tremendous hustle by Casey Hill. Lack of hustle by Florida State, tremendous hustle by Casey Hill and Devin Robinson. I mean, I'm telling you, this kid, we walk in the gym this morning and the first time I've seen Florida in person this year in a shoot around and immediately your eyes go to Devin Robinson and you think, oh my goodness, look at this guy. He's 6'8", he's got long arms. He's got a tremendous jump shot, great form. And again, he, he, he's not a one-and-done type of player. He's not a Jalil Okafor that's coming in and, and scoring. But he just oozes with potential. And you can just see in this type of system that he could become a tremendous two-way player for the Gators. Walker checks out. And Chioza checks out. And Murphy is back into the game. And so is Frazier. Nice job there by Tan Mays. It almost turned over by the Seminoles. They turned it over ten times already, and Kofer nearly traveled there. Tan Mays. Seminoles 5 of 16 shooting 0 for 5 from 3. And their last field goal was almost four minutes ago on the clock at the 10 minute mark. Bojanowski, you had very good run of minutes when he was in there with one to shoot that and actually hit the rim and goes the Florida Gator way. That was a terrible possession and Frazier almost made it worse and the Gators aggressively attacking the glass. Now they'll be called for the foul but I don't know if that's going to upset Billy Donovan all that much. Well Alex Murphy I mean this is only his second game back but one of the things that he was so good at in, the, in that game against Wake Forest was attacking the offensive glass from that three position and you know you expect your four and your five players to go but a lot of times on the wing players forget to check out and alex murphy he'll make you pay he'll go hard to the offensive glass and give them a second opportunity he picked up his second foul horford checks in and finney smith is out of the game the tan may is doing a lovely job there beautiful feet wow that's how you draw it up a slammer by smith Florida slows it down and settles it down a little bit. Horford lost his concentration for a moment. Knowles may get another dunk here. They blow it. Billy Donovan wants a timeout. 
And he's not happy with Horford at all. And rarely will you see a coach run it. And a great contrast, you know, see, can Mississippi State slow down that crazed Georgia Tech in a unique and difficult to prepare for run game when you have a very good defense, as Mississippi State does. So a great triple header. Frazier on the drive. Yeah, he walked. Yeah, he lost his footing just a little bit. So another turnover in the game. Kurtz will come in for the Gators, and Murphy will check out. The 21 turnovers in this half. 10 by Florida, 11 by Florida State. Going to be 12 here if he doesn't call timeout. Nope, it's a five-second violation. It is the 12th turnover. Leonard Hamilton protests. The never saw a timeout signal and that's going to go against the Knowles. So 22 turnovers under five minutes and a half. Hill off the Kurtz pick. Wide open. That's a three ball. Too hard. Look at the height. This is. Two players hand-to-hand -hand going up for the rebound. Walker with it for Florida. Tough shot, way off balance. Rebound going to go the Seminoles' way. Taken out by Booker. We do have some leapers out there for both these teams right now. They're just a little bit erratic. Well, great size. And you see how Florida State's size along the front line can really affect your shot. I mean, Chris Walker's thinking about it as he's going into his post moves. The fact that he's got 7-3 player out there. Lennon Hamilton says, I don't have a lot of shot blockers, but I do have players who can affect your shot. One of them for 7'3", Bojanowski. He'll miss everything with that shot. Rebound to Curtis. Here come the Gators. Very quickly on the front court with Hill. Beautiful Euro step for Hill. No, that's the second time that Jacob Kurtz has given Casey Hill an outlet perfectly on the run. And his end-to-end -end speed is it, that's what makes him a, a, a difference maker at the point guard position. A lot of pressure once again. Dribble picked up. Pass right to the center. Alley oop and a finish. Orts Mojanowski. Great pass. Kurtz, back to Walker, cleared out a little room with that arm, no good, and fighting for it is Kurtz, he saved it, and again, a little extra hustle by Florida that you alluded to, has happened tonight, the three ball missed again, three point shooting has been poor for both teams, here come the Knowles, Brandon into the front court, Florida State's missed all their threes, they missed another one, that's more their range, it's kept up, no good, an opportunity by Bojanowski to tap it in, roll around the rim, and the Knowles continue to struggle offensively in their first year. They're trying to make a big impact. If they can win in East Lansing, that'll make some noise for sure. And they've had some great wins already. Neutral site win against Iowa State. Of course, their only loss of the year is to that Virginia team in the Big Ten ACC Challenge. So they, Mark Turgeon's group is one of the surprise teams, not just in the Big Ten, but in, in the nation. And that's going to be an offensive foul. As Finney Smith a little bit out of control. Knocked over. Turpin. That'll be two on Finney Smith. How has Florida State done from this position here, Garrett, tonight? Out of bounds and trying to beat that press. I mean, you're, you're, you're talking about a team that has double-digit turnovers. I don't think their problem has been when they first got it. I think it's been right here around the half-court area, trying to make passes. See, now they're going to have to burn another timeout. For some reason, they're picking up the basketball right when they cross half-court, which is the absolute worst place. And we'd like to welcome those of you who watched Maryland defeat Michigan State in double overtime. Maryland now 13-1. We welcome you to the Donald L. Tucker Center in Tallahassee, along with Carol Lawson. I'm Dave Lamont. Florida's won five in a row in this rivalry against Florida State, and since the 10-minute mark, it's been the Gators on a 12-4 run. It's been a sloppy game for both teams, both in the double-digit turnovers. 12 by Florida State, 11 by the Gators. Brandon, and 
That's rattled in and out. Had a few of those shots go against both teams. Nice steal. A 12th turnover that's no shot but a blocking foul. Going to be called against Florida. But when we've had points, Gary, it's been off of turnovers. And the Florida started the game anemic on the offensive end of the floor, settling for too many three-point shots. What's been the difference here in the first half when they started to attack the basket, being aggressive? They passed up some open threes, put their head down, and utilizing the force that is Casey Hill in transition, and then the size and the versatility of Alex Murphy and Dorian Finney-Smith in the half court. Right into the one-on-one -on -one is converted for FSU by Xavier Rattan May, 75.5% free throw shooter. As Chioza will check out, Casey Hill comes back in. Florida State has a foul to give if they need it with 2.06 to go. They've only had five team fouls called against them. This is the first game all season long that Billy Donovan has had really the full complement of his roster. It's his second game back for Alex Murphy. He makes his first start in this one. So we've seen a lot of substitutions from both sides. And now you, you can get the full wrath of the full court pressure from Florida because Billy Donovan has that depth now. Warford with another try. He'll pitch it out to Hill quickly to Frazier. Shot fake on the three. Florida working the ball around well with that fresh shot clock by the Horford offensive rebound. He's looking for some help. Can't get it. Trans wanted to travel. Frazier in traffic. Tough drive. He takes a hard ball. Florida State comes away with Turpin getting the rebound. Almost a travel there. And Rattan Mays will pull up. That's a long two. And it goes in. So the Knowles with a mini rally here. Neither team has shot especially well. Florida State has missed all of their three-pointers. That's a good look inside, and that's happened a lot to Florida tonight. Great looks and just not making shots. What do you do to combat pressure? You look to attack it with back cuts, and it's just a great cut there by Frazier. Jarquez Smith falls asleep a little bit. It's a play you got to finish. It's a play you got to finish at the rim. It's an open layup. That last made shot by Florida State was the first time he scored outside the paint or at the foul line. It's only had one shot on what you consider the perimeter. He's run a minute in this half. Good look for Kurtz there. And that doesn't roll. Rebound Walker, and he's fouled. Turpin got a piece of him, got a good piece of him, but Walker is so strong that he was able to overcome that, get the layup, and he'll go to the line. You know, Walker's not real polished on the offensive end of the floor, and we've seen that here in the first half. I mean, he's missed some opportunities down there, but... I've, I've loved his effort. I mean, he has really been bouncy around the rim, tacking, getting his hand on offensive rebounds, blocked shots on the other end of the floor. Did we expect too much out of him when he came to Florida last year? Uh, Billy Donovan says we did. I mean, he was he was very highly touted yeah, at high school. And a McDonald's All-American and showed great promise athletically. He had so much to learn about how to play the game. And watching tape on Florida, one of the big differences I've seen in Chris Walker from last year to this year is how much better he is on the defensive end of the floor in terms of his recognition, recognizing ball screens, what calls he's supposed to make. That takes time. It's not something that you're, that you're born with. It has to be taught. And so while his numbers might not be living up to the hype that everyone thought um, you know, he, he, he was going to be coming in, I see a great deal of improvement in Chris Walker from his freshman year to his sophomore year. He was hit with a personal foul on that, his first. So at the line for Florida State will be Booker from Anchorage, Alaska. 90% free throw shooter. Florida State 0 for 6 from 3. The Gators 1 for 10. Booker makes them both, keep it close. Florida State quickly running in. Another one of their three seven-footers and Michael Ojo. So let's see if they're going to leave Bojanovic in. They do. Bojanovsky, pardon me. So they're going to have two seven-footers under the basket here. It's an 8-2 Seminoles run. And you see Florida State just not good at the perimeter shooting this season. 343rd of the nation. And they haven't done anything to make that better tonight. About seven and a half seconds differential between the two clocks. Walker goes left-handed, then goes to the right. Missed, no good. Ojo in there. 
And if he's careful with it, he won't turn it over, and he does. Hand it off instead to a teammate. Bertan Mays. And believe it or not, Florida State can take the lead back. Despite 8 of 24 shooting. Three ball. Good looking shot. First three of the night made by Florida State. At the buzzer, it is off the mark, and the Seminoles lead by two. They missed their first six threes, and Rattan Mays hits one to put the nose in front. Defensively rebounded well as FSU in their home gold. With a guarded trim, will take the ball in front of us, and we start the second half. Xavier Rattan Mays, and we see that Boris Wojanowski starts this half. He didn't start the game, but he had a very effective stretch. Makes a beautiful pass to the cutting Rattan Mays for a four-point FSU lead. So for Florida, Michael Frazier the second. And that pass intercepted. And an easy finish. Bojanowski. A uh, mini 4 0 run, run for Florida State to extend their two point halftime lead. And how about this ATO right out of the timeout by Leonard Hamilton attacking the over aggressive Gator half court defense? Just a simple play right here. Flash your post player. Frazier's on the high side. You get the back door, back door to Rattan Mays. Great execution, and then they come down the court, Dave, and a seven foot three center gets in the passing lane and gets a steal for a dunk. So, really good start to the half for the Seminoles. Wojnarowski's played very effectively and defending at the rim as well. And the save set up by the Seminoles. Kofor saved an inbound, so an energetic start out of the dressing room for Leonard Hamilton Seminoles. Kofor. Aggressive move to the paint, good footwork, little hook, no good. And we're going to tie up, and the possession arrow should favor Florida. We've got to look at Alex Murphy, number five in the game for Florida. He started tonight in just his second game for the Gators, the former Duke Blue Devil. His brother Eric was an outstanding player for the Gators. Also on the floor, Casey Hill, working with Dorian Finney-Smith, number 10, 21, is John Horford. A lot of players for Philly Dodgers team, prominent players, started their careers at other schools. Horford being one of them. Graduated from Michigan. Benny Smith, Virginia Tech. Shot for Hill. That's all net for Casey Hill. Yeah, I like, I, I've liked Casey Hill's game tonight. I think he's really pushed it in transition, looked to attack there. I think that's got to be a staple of what he does. If he can get something on the run, he needs to try and do it. He's not an outside shooter in the half court. He's not, he's not a three-point threat, but he knows his spots that he can make jumpers like the one he just did there. And Florida, prior to that shot, Gary, had missed 12 of their last 14. Three ball. That's way off. Hard ball taken by Cooper. It'll be Florida ball. Now, if you're just joining us, Florida State this season is one of the worst three-point shooting teams in college basketball, one of eight for the night, 24% coming in, 343rd in the country. But Florida's worse this evening at 10%. What's well, not a strength of Florida's offense either. I mean, they have Michael Frazier who can shoot, shoot it very well from beyond the arc. But the three-point shot is not a strength of their entire team. One for 11 as Murphy has a bounce out. A rebound fought for control by Phil Kofer, a freshman from Fayetteville, Georgia. Tan Mays. Wojnowski trying to get position on Horford and just shoves him aside. Good defense by Murphy. And a lazy pass intercepted by Florida State. And then stepped out of bounds. Turnover after turnover after turnover. Florida State ball after all of that. Well, it's got to be driving Billy Donovan crazy. I mean, just a lack of focus, a lack of attention to detail by his players. And we're not talking about young guys. I mean, we're talking about Dorian Finney-Smith, a redshirt, redshirt junior, fourth-year college player. I mean, they've just made some some bonehead plays here, and it's cost them. That's missed three, but Florida State off the offensive glass. Monte Brandon. Seminoles had the lead for most of the first half. Not a large lead. And then Florida got hot in the last few minutes. And then Florida State hits the big three and Horford with a baseline game. And that three by Florida State gave the Seminoles a two-point halftime lead at 26-24. Big pressure this time. And a pass the middle to Brandon. He'll drive. Got a good screen. 
Underneath to Bojanowski and another bucket for Brandon. Hill over the seven footer. Beautiful lefty shot by Casey Hill. And this is why made shots are so important for Florida. They can set up this. And although Florida State's had some success attacking this pressure, you can get them going quicker than they want to go on the offensive end. And Bojanowski draws the foul off the rebound. Well, there might have been a little contact against Horford on that initial shot, but no call made. Now there will be a whistle. And that'll be the second foul on Horford for the night. Well, we talked about how composed and how in attack mode Casey Hill has been. And he just uses his body there. And, you know, you talk about getting it oversized. You don't have to get it oversized if you can get it up before the size jumps. And so that's what he does there. I mean, he just sneaks underneath Boris Bojanowski's arm, and he's able to finish. Tommy Berwick checking in from FSU. You know, Florida State, even though they... they They've had a lot of turnovers uh, against the Florida pressure. I love the fact that they've been undeterred in terms of attacking it because we've seen on the back end they've been able to get some good looks, whether it was Brandon attacking, getting that layup, or offensive rebounding with Bojanowski. You force Horford or who's ever in the back line of that Florida zone to come out and you get a shot on the rim, now you've got a smaller guy trying to box out your center and you can get some offensive rebounds. Nine for Bojanowski. He's got two assists and two steals. Florida brought in Chris Chioza, number 11. There's Frazier. That made that Finney Smith for three. Shooting it as good as Frazier does. And Finney Smith puts it down. Only the second made three for the Gators tonight. And Frazier had the other one. Little floater here. Wide open for Tan May. Tapped up no good by Kyle Turpin into the game. Hill. And he withdraws. So Turpin is the seven-footer of the moment for Florida State. Three of them get pretty equal playing time for the Knowles. Jimmy Smith flashed open to hit the second. Kurtz. Good looking pass there. That was crisply delivered. Chioza rattles it down. Good looking pass from Robinson. Well, it changes. It changes the feel when you make shots. I mean, there's back to back possessions. Florida's been able to hit threes, and now the ball is humming. You're able to, to get the quality looks that you want because of that three point shot. Clever little pass there. Berwick cut off. Florida now looking very aggressive and lively. There's the tough shot. Knocked out the hill. And Florida on a run here. Open. Robinson three ball. Kurtz with the rebound. Here's Hill. Finney Smith feeling it, but Berwick kept it from shooting the ball. More than five minutes gone in this half. Finney Smith on the drive. Big finish. And count it. It's a three-point opportunity for Florida and Dorian. Finney Smith. The boys across the way. Uh, the fans of these two schools are very lucky indeed. Well, maybe Gino will be calling uh, James Winston for Tampa Bay. So Florida on a 14-9 second half run. And thanks to going 2 of 4 from the three-point line, the big difference in here. Seminoles have lost the last five meetings between they and the Gators. Shut down beautifully by Finney Smith. Turpin gets it back as he reposts. Lefty hook, short rebound, Florida. And Frazier still playing with some of the stitches in his head from a collision with a Wake Forest player. In Florida's last game, it was 10 days ago. Finney Smith crossed over there. Chioza, plenty of time still to shoot. Off the Kurt screen, knocked away from Robinson. Now you don't have quite so much time. You're down to six. Back to Chioza. Two to get it off. He does. Hands it off at the buzzer. Does it count? Yes. I'm not 100% sure that got out of his hand in time. But the officials say it does, and that's all that matters. Florida State counters for a tough shot in traffic by Monte Brandon. 
And Brandon, the steal. The Florida State comes back. Plays a little Florida Gator ball on him. Turpin is hacked by Kurtz and he'll go to the line. That foul will be on Kurtz and it's his first. Well, we got Journey to the Tourney coming up on Monday. Notre Dame ranked 14th. That's a good looking team. Bangling number 19, North Carolina in a big ACC matchup, 7 o'clock Monday at ESPN. Part of Journey to the Tourney presented by Sonic, the home court of College Hoops. Big Monday presented by Verizon. Of course, also available on Watch ESPN. Well, one thing you see in, in that game is Notre Dame is one of the top offensive teams in the country, and that's not, that's not, uh, we haven't seen a lot of offense in college <laughs> basketball today, that's for sure. No, the game in front of us was not no. high scoring, only because it went to two overtimes and somebody get in the 60s. Right, and you know, we, we talked so much this season, big picture, about how great certain teams are defensively, and the top teams especially, when you look at Kentucky, you look at Louisville, you look at Virginia, and how great they are defensively, but there are some some poor offensive teams out there, and that's the reason why we've had so, so much low-scoring teams that need to find their way on the offensive end of the floor. Is there a common problem with these poor offensive teams you can point out and say if they need to do this better? Yeah, there's not enough people that can make shots. I mean, you don't have enough guys out there that can, that can make shots, and so if you struggle to score, you better be a good defensive team or you're not going to win games. Hamilton doesn't think this year's team at the moment is as good defensively as some of the others he's had here at Florida State. And he's had some really good ones. Count the basket. And Memphis, you will get a chance to tie the game. It's Phil Kofer. It's his first bucket of the night. Well, Kofer's been a good piece to the Seminole team so far this season. He was a player that was really unexpected. And he was signed with the University of Tennessee. And then when Conzo Martin left and went to California, he was let out of his NLI and was a late add to the Seminoles recruiting class. And he's been invaluable for this team. He, he gives them a different dimension. We talked about Florida State's size across their front line. And he gives them an athletic piece at the power forward position. And we saw right there his ability to finish. That's Florida State's rep. They have I've been known over the years for big players and big athletic players. Kofor at 6'8". You've got Bojanowski out there at the moment at 7'3". You can bring Michael Ojo in at 7'1". And Kyle Turpin at 7 feet. Hill, tough shot. A floater over the big man, and he gets it. So he's been the best player on the floor. Uh, I mean, his ability to create shots in the half court has not been matched by, by any other player. Uh, on the court and Casey Hill I, I wondered how long when Billy Donovan took him out he was he was gonna let him sit on the bench because he has been the reason that they have been able to score here in the second half Bojanowski had living the pass here in traffic losing the ball temporarily Bojanowski picks it up almost threw it away and Rattan Mays realizes they need to reset this here's a three ball and it's an old lead Booker with the three. He's a decent three-point shooter for this team at about 37%. And that's going to be an offensive foul on Walker on the illegal screen. Nothing like that tonight. We have seen a close basketball game throughout. Both teams have struggled a bit to shoot. Florida at 41.9%. Florida State at 40%. And the three ball shooting not good for either team. Florida 3 of 15, FSU 2 of 11. What we have is a great deal of intensity on the defensive end and another turnover by Florida State. The Tan Mays says it's my fault, and yes, indeed it was. That's going to kill you as a coach, and you spend all that time, you know what you're getting defensively from Florida, and you still make mistakes. Well, we talked with Leonard Hamilton in his office earlier today, and one of the things he said is, you know, we, we know what we have to do. We can't turn the basketball over. We can't afford to get sped up. But that's hard That's hard to do in the heat of the game when you're facing all that pressure to not speed yourself up. Trouble here, Frazier. That's how he got hurt, trying to force up a shot against Wake Forest. He collided with another player. That was a similar-looking play and a result that did not go his way. He stared down one of our officials on his way back to defense, too. Tan Mays crossing Frazier, just lost it, ran into trouble, he got lucky there as Kofer is the man on the spot. Wojnowski getting a lot of minutes tonight and he's earned a tough drive. Walker, that's a long body to get the pass around. Five to shoot, three ball, fourth up, good! 
by Monte Brandon. His first three of the night is perfect. Kurtz has six rebounds on the evening for Billy Donovan. Walker, baseline J, no good. Kurtz is fighting for it, but Florida State controls. Rebound, Brandon. 7 0's leading scorer and leading rebounder. Under 10 minutes in this battle. FSU 7 and 5, Florida 7 and 4. Baseline J, that's way off. Rebound, Murphy for the Gators. Good looking pass. Kurtz with some athleticism and he can't get it to go. And the rebound of the Nolan. Monte Brandon. And we'll get a foul here. Let's see if that'll be on Walker. And if it is, it'll be three. And it is. So Boris Bojanovsky, the junior from Bratislava in the Slovak Republic, has been a key player for FSU tonight. You know, we've referenced that Florida State has three players on their roster that are seven feet and above, and they kind of all bring different things to the table. Boris Bojanovsky is more of the finesse player, really skilled, passive basketball. We've seen him get the passing lane, a 7-3, take, get the steal and take it all the way in. But he's been the most effective of those three tonight. But it's really been a night-by-night -night basis for Leonard Hamilton. Different nights, different guys have stepped up. All three get playing time every game. And there is Michael Ojo from Lagos, Nigeria. He'll give Bojanovski a rest. Ojo, just a big 7-foot-1. And not deeply experienced. Barely played in high school. As a matter of fact, in his... In his town, he wasn't allowed to dunk because they had one goal for the entire town. So he comes to Tallahassee to play college ball, and the first time he goes out for a drill, Ojo doesn't dunk, and the coaches remind him, we'll get more rims if we need to. <laughs> Back out of bounds, and let's see where this goes. Should belong to Florida. And a fresh 35. You know, he talked about the patience that Leonard Hamilton and his staff has had, have, have had to have with their frontline players. Frontline players generally mature a little slower than perimeter players in terms of their basketball uh, ability. And so then you take a player like Michael Ojo that only played 15 games prior to a college career. So he had a lot to learn about the game. He's grown a ton from last season. Yep, and at a high major. He's not in a small conference. He's in the ACC. Florida working the ball around Robinson, wide open for three. No good. And there's Ojo's strength right there. Just flicked off. Finney Smith. That's a tough little Tony Parker shot. No good. Rebound FSU and the good line. Cooper will get a chance to shoot two. Second foul that will go against Devin Robinson. ESPN2 Saturday showcase featuring a Big Ten. ACC doubleheader. Illinois versus number 20 Ohio State at 3.30 Eastern and head down south. Virginia, number three team in the nation taking on the Miami Hurricanes. That'll be Saturday in ESPN2 in the home court. College shoots. Both Illinois and Ohio State are looking to avoid the 0-2 start in the Big Ten with both of them suffering tough losses today. And, you know, conference play is different. You, know, you can be stellar in the non-conference and then you get into these these teams that know you so well, the, the styles that, that make up the, these different conferences, and it can go south pretty quickly in a conference like the Big Ten. Well, Illinois walked into an emotional trap today, too, with Jim Harbaugh <laughs> and Michigan and all that stuff going on there. But they have their opportunities. I mean, they, they certainly have their opportunities to win that game. That was a, a really big win for the Michigan Wolverines, a team that's, that, that struggled and, and had some tough losses in the non-conference. One big thing here for Florida State, free throws. You see Florida's in a slump. They haven't scored in over four minutes, and they've only taken one free throw, while the Seminoles have made five of nine. Frazier for three. Too hard. Rebound. And the Seminoles come away with it. Sean Watkins, number four, leads the break. I don't think you can get a three from him. You might get one from Berwick, though. Came out a little flat. Tapped out. 
and FSU controls with Booker. That first to every ball, aren't they? I mean, the last last minute and a half, two minutes of this game, first to every defensive rebound, offensive rebound, deflections. I mean, they're just getting and making the hustle plays much quicker than Florida is. Look out here, and Florida State will lose it. The effort being made there by Booker and Ojo, but it didn't matter. Florida State's on a 14-2 run, though. Will Florida go to free? Game handle all the way down to the Keys, and they've lost the last five. Now, Florida's a great team. And you've got to end that streak eventually, or can you? And at the moment, things are going Florida State's way. Hurts on the drive. He got hit. He'll go to the line for a three-point opportunity. You know, so critical. After timeouts, when the coach draws something up that you execute, it can be the difference in a ball game. And Jacob Kurtz, nice job attacking. He's got the quickness advantage over Ojo there. But, to, you know, go back to, you're talking about Florida. And, you know, Florida is a great program. This is not a great Florida team. And I think they're still coming together. And it's something that last year was a great Florida team. I mean, 36-3 and three undefeated in the SEC. This has a lot of guys in new roles. And we talked about how this is the eighth different starting lineup that Billy Donovan has used. So they're still coming together. But this is not a vintage Florida Gator team by any stretch. Will it be that way in March? Remains obviously to be seen. The beautiful turnaround by Jarquez Smith. But obviously you've got one of the best, if not the best, coaches in college basketball. ESPN.com did a top 50 college basketball coaches story in the offseason. And Billy Donovan was voted number one. Up and under, and good. Beautifully done there by Robinson. Clever move. Yeah, he's a nice-looking player, a freshman that, I mean, you walk in the gym and you say, wow. I mean, he's got terrific length. You can see he's got potential. His shot, his form on his shot is really, really good. At six foot eight, he's got NBA size for that small forward position. So he's a player that, that could turn into a really good two-way player for Billy Donovan. He didn't look like a freshman. He certainly doesn't play like it. Sometimes he does, occasionally. They all do. Kurtz will be hit with that foul because he didn't give Brandon enough room on the come down. And that should put us into one and one. Second foul on Kurtz, and the Seminoles will finish the evening at the foul line. Timeout, Florida. 30 second timeout taken by Bill. To have to grow and, and get better on both ends of the floor. They have a really interesting. Non-conference battle coming up January 3rd. They'll host UConn, the defending national champs, before they open up SEC play in Columbia against Frank Martin's Gamecocks. That, that's an interesting game because UConn's a little bit off at the moment, and Florida's a little bit off. The, the UConn's similar to Florida in that they're just not as talented as they were a season ago. They lost so much experience. I mean, those four seniors for Florida a year ago, and when you look at the, the seniors that UConn lost, Shabazz Napier, Niels Giffey, I mean, they, they just lost players, and so they're different teams this year, and, you know, they're going to have to grow into who they are. 15 points for Brandon. Florida still hanging around. Under six minutes to go, and just really a two-possession game if they hit some threes, which they did earlier. Chioza. But they're not the three-point threat they were a year ago. And Frazier is not out there right now. Finney Smith on the drive. Beautiful move to the left hand. Count that basket. Wow. Explosive by Dorian Finney Smith. Well, when Florida has great spacing, they're able to take advantage of their smaller lineup of the quickness of players like Dorian Finney Smith. I mean, he doesn't do anything special there. He just turns and faces and uses his quickness to get to the basket. At least the three-point play. The foul was on Jarquez Smith, his second. Frazier now back in the game. Chioza checks out for Billy Donovan's Gators. And it's just a three-point game. And, of course, Florida. The trademark pressure. Tan Mays in big trouble, and he gets rid of it. To Smith. Long hit-ahead pass. And the Seminoles. Oh, three. Ejected, but a foul. Wow. Finney Smith is away. That should be a jump ball, but it is not. Instead will be his third personal foul. Nice cross-court pass against the pressure. And Monte Brandon has really attacked the back end of that pressure. Let's see. Yeah, he gets a 
He gets a whole lot of that wrist right there. And a little bit of the body as well. So Phil Kofers hit all three of his previous foul shots. One for three from the field. He also picked up five rebounds. And he's four for four from the line. And he came in shooting 58.5%. This may be where the Seminoles win this game if they're able to do so, is hitting their free throws. All right, go for five for five. This looks a pressure. Florida State with a free throw advantage. They've taken 11 more than the Gators. 15 of 21 tonight and a three ball. And it's just a two-point game, and the deadliest shooter on the court connects for UF. Tan Mays, kind of like dribbling through cones in a camp drill. Florida fighting for the ball. It's a jump ball, FSU on the possession arrow. Florida makes shots there that enables them to set up this, which is just some run and jump action. And, and all night long, they've been waiting for that half court line. I mean, that's where you want to trap, right over that half court line. And don't give the point guard ability to go backwards. And they almost get another turnover right there. Break on the possession arrow. Now it goes the Gators' way. Under five minutes in this game. Low scoring and close. Seven to shoot. Rattan Mays, five to shoot. Four, three, with two. And a rebound high in the air. Goes Penny Smith. Florida could take the lead here. Trying to deny the ball to Frazier. Instead, he'll go on the drive and travel. Surprising turnover. Well, that's a really good defense by Florida State because if you're defending Michael Frazier, what do you want to do? You want to run him off the three-point line. Don't give him any space. Don't give him a clean look. Make him put the basketball on the floor. And if you do that, the way Florida State defends, there's going to be help, and it should be outside of the paint. And that was good help there by Kofi. 17 turnovers by the Gators. Almost another turnover for Florida State. They've turned it over 14 times. 15 times. And we're tied. Timeout called by the Seminoles. And a lot of Gator. You have to move to the basketball. You have to give him opportunities and outlets for him to beat the pressure. Two is going to one, so somebody should be open and available. Ivor Tan Mays has it, and Florida State very quickly and cleanly breaks it. An off balance, wild shot taken, got the rebound back and going the line. Monte Prandon threw up a crit. Nearly 700 victories between the two. Actually, not nearly. You're way over them. But at their respective schools between the two. Hamilton is 425. And Billy Donovan 493 in his career. 458 for Donovan in Florida. And here for Hamilton, 226. We're still tied. Smith with the up fake. Tough little hook shot. Rebound cleared out by Jarquez Smith. Devin Booker. That's Xavier Rattan Mays. Tough drive. Little pull up, Jay. Got it. He's had a couple of big shots. The one right before halftime. The Florida State ahead by two. And they're ahead by two again. Under three minutes in this one. Frazier. Tough little shot. Rebound. And I tell you, Phil Coulter's had a very good half. That's his sixth rebound for FSU.
Oh, crunching screen by Smith. Off of that screen, that shot is missed. That could have been a big one. But instead, the rebound goes to the freshman Robinson. And here comes Florida. Casey Hill on the drive, and he draws contact. Tim Mays has been, he's been timely. Timely with his shots. And just keeps the, the dribble alive, and that, that's not an easy shot. I mean, it's contested at the free throw line, but he, he's shown no fear, and, and he understands that he's a big piece of this team on the offensive end of the floor. Nice shot fake there by Frazier. And he came up, short, tapped up, no good. Rebound, Florida State. By the way, the Noles only have four fouls. They've got a couple to give if they need them. Meantime, the next foul by Florida puts FSU two shots for the remainder of the game. We're down to one of those games where every possession is going to carry a ton of weight. Usually around 10 seconds when you start your play. Retan Mays. Booker. That's a tough, long three. Timeout. Florida. FSU up by five. Benny Smith on the drive and a sweet shot over the defense. It's a three-point Seminoles lead. Tan Mays looks for help. He gets it. Gopher, good pass there. Good ball handling. Little Jay. Hooker hits it. Under a minute. Frazier thinking of the three, maybe. Hill, middle's open, and he'll go to the line. Middle has not been open much tonight. Hill very alertly jumped in there and took advantage of it. That'll be on Bertan Mays, just his second. Well, Billy Donovan makes the decision to continue the pressure, and what has happened a lot of the time here in the second half is Florida State's been able to exploit the back end when they got numbers. Now, that's a gutsy shot there. That's not a layup that Booker took. But certainly that pressure opened up that opportunity. Hill's a 69% free throw shooter. I wonder if we'll see pressure on a make here by Florida. It looks like we will see it again. And if I'm Florida State, I do the same thing. I look to try to attack. We're going to call a timeout first and try to figure out a way to attack. That Hill with Smith 1 of 4. Florida can tie this with one stroke. But first, they have to be it up. Going to go with a long pass, and it is back. Two players contending for the ball. Robinson looks confused. Billy Donovan's waving it off like that's just a terrible call in my view. And going to the line for two will be Florida State. Well, it looked like this ball was short. Yeah. In football. And this isn't, obviously. That's a no call. I think it's a no call here, too. Because you're equally going for yeah. a, a tie ball. I, I, I would agree. I, I'm not sure that's the right call to make. But Brandon will go to the line. He'll get two. It would be one thing if Robinson had just cleared him out. Then you get the call. Well, it was just two guys going for the ball was yeah. what it was. Yeah. And Brandon fell. Sometimes that's all it takes. Yeah. They nail those two. And now it's a five-point game with 49.3. 12 points in the second half from Monte Brandon in Florida. And an end one. You never foul when you're ahead late. And they did. Rattan May is hit with his third. And there goes your foul to give. Well, Casey Hill, he's done this all game, and, and he's at his best when he is ultra-aggressive in transition. In the half court, you can back off of him because he's not an outside shooting threat. But in transition, while the defense is still retreating, he is very tough to stay in front of. No problem on the free throw. It's a two-point game. Here's the pressure. Good bounce pass there. We're asking Devin Booker to break it, running out of time. To the half court line barely got that off in time. Tough shot, no good. Wild out of control shot that time by Rattan Mays. 
Shot clock is off. Florida does have a timeout, and they're going to use it. With 22 seconds to go, the Gators can tie. Kurtz, Robinson, Frazier, Kenny Smith, and Hill, the five for Billy Donovan. And it's Hill with the ball. On the drive, kick out, Robinson, three. Rebound tapped out, Kurtz for the rebound again. Ten seconds remaining, alley-oop for time. Eight seconds to go, the Noles have a timeout. Rattan Mays with three. Timeout, Florida State. That shot does not count. Florida State called time. We may get the officials to pass out of it if you want. I mean, Booker to me has made a, a couple of tough shots. And from long range, he might be your best option. He has it here. He'll fire it for the win. Oh, it went in. It may have been knocked in by a gator. I believe it went in. 